after five years of requests, complaints, and people literally switching away from Notion because of this one missing feature, it's finally here. I want to talk about one feature today. Notion offline mode has officially been launched, and for a lot of people, this is a relatively simple change, which is extremely significant and actually changes everything. I'm not actually being dramatic here. This is genuinely the most requested feature in Notion's history, in their own words. The community has been relentless about it, and I think for good reason, because up until now, no Wi-Fi or connection means the possibility of no work and not accessing your important information. That brilliant idea you had on a flight kind of gone, the project you needed to reference during a power outage, inaccessible. But as of August the 19th, 2025, this all changed. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how offline mode works and with a full demo, the smart way to set it up, use it and what you can and can't do. So there's some limitations there too. And whether this finally makes Notion the reliable all-in-one system for far more people than it used to be. It's Simon, welcome back to Better Creating and let's dive into what might be the most significant Notion update we've seen in years. All right, here's everything you can do right now offline in Notion and how to get started. First, how to set it up. Well, you need the latest version of the Notion app installed. So make sure you shut Notion down and then reopen it again. And remember, this is only going to be useful on the desktop and mobile apps, not your browser, because, well, it needs to be on a device. So if we go into my workspace and then settings and click on offline, we see this top option. And for paid users like me, Notion can automatically download your 20 most recent pages and 20 favorites. You see them right here. Now everyone, including free users, gets unlimited manual downloads, which you can see a list of in the settings. And that means that you just have to toggle them to available offline. So on any page, if I go up to the top corner on the dots, we go down to available offline, and then I can toggle that on and we'll see that it downloads it into your system. And then you can click on view all downloads and see everything that's there. And you also have the option to click on this toggle to see everything that you've personally downloaded and everything that Notion has downloaded for you. Now watch this, I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi here for a moment and we're gonna then be able to see that we're working offline and it tells me when I was last synced. This allows me then to, for example, you saw that I downloaded the content manager. I can jump into the page and we can see up here, we've got manage offline pages showing up in that menu. Now you'll also see which pages are grayed out and which pages have been downloaded. So these are the most recently visited pages in my content manager. So it's showing me which pages are accessible. Now I can create new pages as you normally would, edit and add blocks and it will update that. But what you can see here, for example, is this button would normally add a new video into my content manager. I'm not able to do that currently because I'm offline. So there are some limitations in databases, which we'll get more onto in a moment. But as long as I've got the pages downloaded, loaded, I will be able to do things like add new tasks into a database. I can update fields in that database, link things to areas, and so on and so forth. So that's giving me plenty of flexibility to make sure that that's updating. And then when I go back online, it will all sync across the system. Now, a really clever part of offline mode is database support. For any page with a database, Notion downloads the first 50 rows automatically. So my task manager and project manager, content calendar can all be accessible offline. I can add new entries and update existing ones on everything, which is great. I can open pages, see information that's linked to it, um, update any elements of the system as I want, but buttons aren't usable currently. I'd love to see those made possible soon. Now, if I go back to say my content manager and we can see that certain stuff is not available, if I then go back online, you'll see all of the pages now update to show themselves again. And anything that I've added or updated will be synced back across everything automatically. And remember that if you want a database to show, you would need to go to the database and you would need to make that entire database available offline. So when you're back in your linked views of those databases, it will still work. And if you're in a paid plan, you should use your favorites to ensure that those key pages are favorited and shown. So beyond the database level, one way to do that 
is to go to the page you want to favorite and then just use this star to make sure it's favorited and added to that list. So this means that new content appears, edits merge perfectly, and Notion has really pleasingly handled all the conflict resolution in the background. That's the core functionality. And honestly, it feels exactly like normal Notion, just without needing internet, which is exactly what we wanted. So we think 2025 is the year to invest in performance, offline mode, reliability at scale and mobile. I think so many of the my viewers and the community are gonna be so excited about yeah, that. The yeah. basics. Yeah. So why is this actually a big deal? This isn't just another little feature update. Notion ship hundreds of them a year, but rather this is a fundamental shift of, I think, how Notion is viewed by potential users and organizations. In countless surveys, social media comments, offline functionality has been the number one requested feature from users of Notion. Not AI or better databases or nice UI features, offline mode. And there's a really good reason for this. This isn't just about convenience, it's about trust. You want to be able to rely on your productivity system to work work when you need it most. Otherwise, you start looking for alternatives. And I actually think that Notion has been potentially losing users, not because the product wasn't good enough, but because it wasn't allowing people to access their important information when they need it without Wi-Fi. But I think this is also opening the door for a bunch of very exciting new features we'll probably hear about at Make With Notion in September. So I think this update potentially opens Notion to an entirely new type of user who values reliability and local access to their information above all else. Okay, so let's talk about what you can't do, the honest limitations. Let's be realistic about those limitations because Notion are not yet offering you complete workspace offline mode, but they did say yet. So we do see that one coming soon. And what doesn't work offline? Well, there's quite a few things. AI features, file uploads, embeds from tools like Figma or Slack, advanced database features like formulas and rollups, and sharing or exporting pages. But I think the biggest limitation is that database scope. You only get those first 50 rows, and most importantly, sub pages aren't included. And that's a bit of a deal breaker for me. So for example, if I was to go into like my video on how to use AI like a pro, I want to be able to access my script that is written within the template, but that's a sub page, so I wouldn't be able to do that. So I would love a way within the menu for us to be able to include sub pages. That would be super useful. So if you have massive databases or complex linked systems, you'll need to manually download specific pages. Then again, for my use case, it's rare that I'll need more than the most recent 20 pages in that database. And honestly, you know, I think for people doing big data, you're going to want to be plugged in anyway. Also, offline pages don't sync across devices automatically. So pages you download on your laptop won't be available for your phone unless you download them there too. That's a little bit annoying. I'd love to see a better fix from Notion in the future that will allow offline mode to be consistent across your kind of ecosystem of apps like your phone and your computer. But look, let's be honest, these limitations make sense for a first release. I think they do mean though at this moment that Notion offline mode is best for people wanting to have access to key documents and plan ahead rather than big collaborative projects. So let me talk to you about my strategy for how I would use offline mode right now. So if I wanted to optimize something like my simplified Notion Life OS, I would want to go down into my system databases and ensure that the key databases are actually loaded up. So for example, if you've got an inline database, you kind of need to go and view the database as a page, then click on it and then make it available offline. So this is like quite a tricky one to get right. So if you've got databases that are in line, you're going to have to go to your actual original database. You've then got to click the dots and go and view the database. It's kind of a key element of being able to make things available offline. I'd also treat offline mode like you're packing for a trip. So I don't want to take everything with me. I just want to think about what are the things I'll need offline. So in my simplified Notion Life OS, I might want to go to my notes and clippings and go, yeah, it's my notes that I'm going to want to use. Another way to find the database to make sure that it's on offline is go to open source database. You could then jump up 
and turn it on. So a little bit of housekeeping early on is going to make a huge difference. So maybe think about it in categories, the always available categories, my daily dashboards, current projects and video notes, quick capture templates, they stay permanently downloaded. And then maybe there's individual pages that you're specifically working on. So you do need a bit of a strategy to make this work at the moment. Personally, I would do it at the database level and the page level. So you could jump into your homepage, find the key pages that you want to work with. Maybe I want to have my build along uh, system ready to do a demo when I'm filming offline, and then I can jump in and make it available offline. So here's my question to you. What would be in your offline Notion pack? Let me know in the comments what your essential pages are and what you're using Notion for the offline mode is going to actually help with. So here's the big question. Is this now finally going to make Notion the ultimate productivity system for more people than it currently does? Kind of, yeah, for a lot of people. And for others, this doesn't really make that much difference. And that's not necessarily in a negative way. I think a lot of us are using systems like this pretty much connected anyway. It's quite hard to be somewhere when you don't have signal. If you can plug into your hotspot on your phone or you can get access to Wi-Fi, you're kind of okay. But what this does do is particularly if you're a remote worker, you travel frequently, or you just need to rely on having information at your fingertips, offline mode can be that super safe area of Notion that you set up to ensure when you need it, it's there. What's exciting though is this is clearly just the beginning. Notion took a very long time to get this right and get it launched and I trust they'll continue to expand it thoughtfully, particularly on that little nudge towards the idea of entire workspaces. But will we have to pay for that? possibly. So if offline functionality has been the one thing stopping you from fully committing to Notion, now could be your moment. And on that note, if you're thinking about now using Notion to store more of your information or considering moving to it, I've got a full set of Notion Live OS templates that I think are perfect for fast tracking to a minimal but powerful setup that works brilliantly in offline mode. So check them out at bettercreating.com. I'm currently offering a discount uh, for people to celebrate this new launch. So check that out and you can get the functionality you need in Notion from day one. However, mastering tools like this is just one piece of building a productivity system for yourself that actually sticks and works. The real secret is understanding why most systems fail in the first place and it's not your tools. In this video, I break down the three productivity mistakes that can keep smart people from being organized and a simple framework that actually fixed this for me. Click my face to get subscribed if you haven't and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.